In this video cast, Andrew Yeomans from the Jericho Forum will be giving us some highlights from his keynote talk on the data integrity attacks, The Silent Killer. So, Andrew, uh, tell us a little bit about what happened in your seminar. Well, it was a very interesting session. Uh, we had a number of experts but uh, um, talking about the, the issues of data integrity attacks, where people uh, um, are deliberately attacking the integrity of data and using that uh, for their own advantage. I think one of the scariest parts about the whole session was the, um, what, what the, the survey which had been taken out um, in the, a few weeks before, which was uh, basically came up with the result that uh, uh, we, we asked the question, um, some commentators have identified data integrity to be the next big problem. How confident are you about the integrity and accuracy of your critical business data? The scary thing is was that 64% of the people replying to the survey said that they were very unconfident about uh, the, the, um, the integrity and accuracy of the data. Um, only 4% were very confident, and that, that says a lot. If, if the fundamental business data we've got, people don't know that it's actually right. Well, that, that is quite interesting, because that backs up the Roundtree report, I, I, I think it was, mm. where they had a look at a lot of uh, government databases and, and found that only uh, a, a very small minority was actually compliant mm. and had uh, in, information that wasn't... Uh, uh, corrupt in some way. Yeah. Now, now some, some of that is understandable if you see where people are getting the data from. They're uh, collecting information from individuals. Uh, people type errors at times. Sometimes the amount of data being asked for by, by a company is actually, um, in the eyes of the respondent, is actually excessive. So if you just want to uh, download a copy of a white paper, you don't really necessarily want to give your name, address, phone number, date of birth, and all, all that sort of information. So it's not surprising that there's a lot of erroneous information collected at first. Now that isn't particularly malicious, but uh, conversely, as soon as it comes to critical business data, uh, not only do you get that level of errors, but there is still the risk that people may be actually actively modifying that data, uh, and we don't have, as an industry, very good ways of detecting whether that data has been modified in general. Mm. So that doesn't that make it difficult to identify what data uh, should be protected and what data shouldn't be protected in terms of integrity. If you haven't got the quality there in the first place, you've got no baseline to start from. Yeah, it, it certainly is a very, very big challenge. Um, identifying what types of data there are and what is actually critical to the organisation is still a large challenge to many companies. Some parts are very easy to identify, but then there's the, the pieces of data which has a knock-on effect if it was incorrect. And uh, um, by and large, we don't have very good methods of uh, linking all the pieces of data together when some, something is used in one application and then passed on to another application. It might be quite clear that my bank account details is quite sensitive to me and when you use that, but maybe my name and address isn't seen to be that sensitive. After all, it's in the telephone book. But if I could... Uh, if a criminal could alter my name and address, alter that check which is due to be sent to me to another uh, address, and then alter it back again to what it was originally, uh, even if you did have ways of checking for the data, you wouldn't detect that, but the check would have disappeared, and uh, the records would say that, uh, um, that the organisation had sent me a check, and I haven't received it. Can, can I move back to the title of your, your mm. seminar, Data Integrity Attacks, because at the moment we're talking about typing errors and people deliberately putting in the wrong information because they want to download a white paper. So can, can we focus on these attacks? Because mm. uh, changing data... Uh, has been traditionally uh, kind of more difficult than, say, a denial of service of attack or a confidentiality attack. It, it's been uh, more difficult to, uh, to, to uh, perform those types of attacks if you're totally outside an organisation, but it, Converse has been relatively easy to, to do within an organisation. Um, understanding the reason why data is modified uh, is quite a, quite a challenge. In, in, I mean, in, in the financial services industry, there's a, the, the four eyes principle is often talked about, where you need two people to actually do uh, uh, certain updates together. Uh, so at least, you ha um, at, at worst, you have to have two people colluding together to do it, uh, to actually uh, misuse the systems. So um, a single person on, uh, um, just doing things themselves can't corrupt the data. But 
when it comes to altering data, there, there can be several legitimate reasons for doing it, and also the illegitimate reasons. So correcting an address, as the example I gave um, a couple of minutes ago, um, it could be absolutely legitimate. Perhaps someone has uh, really changed the address, perhaps there's a typographic thing in the address. But um, being able to distinguish between that type of situation and the ones where the address has been maliciously altered is very difficult for computer systems. You tend to need to have a real human in there to see that these changes are valid. And, so, that, and that costs money. So uh, we end up with the economic issues. And how, how much is it costing to have uh, bad integrity of data?